So here's an update before the hurricane hits. So cut back a bunch of the leaves on the bananas because they're going to get shredded. Put the storm shutters up. But when they have fruit on them, that is the total amount of leaves they're going to ever going to get. So if you want the fruit to continue to grow, you have to leave some leaves. So, you know, if the storm knocks it over, oh well. But if I cut them all off, then there's nothing to produce sugar for the bananas to grow. So I went ahead and left some of the leaves on. And unfortunately, right before the storm, had a whole bunch of bananas decide that they wanted to fruit. So got those two and the big one right there. That one might be okay if it gets knocked over. I might be able to uh, harvest them because they're starting to plump up a little bit. The other two are way too small. I don't know. That one might make it if it falls over. We'll see. And then if that's the case, we've got these backup ones right here. So hopefully all this nursery stock does okay. It's got a little bit of protection from these mulberry trees right here. I cut them back a little bit. But... Uh, Hopefully the wind doesn't shred it too much and knock a whole bunch of branches down because here's all my little babies down here that hopefully after the storm I'll be able to sell. But I did go ahead and tuck this uh, breadfruit and the Japota kava over there so that they'll be safe. It's got a little protection from the storm. I expect the winds to be coming from the east so they're tucked up right there. Some really pretty kanaf hibiscus growing right here. So this is a delicious hibiscus. These leaves, you put a couple of them in your salad and they're really good. You could also make tea out of those flowers or just eat the flowers if you wanted to. Didn't really like the flavor myself, but they are very pretty. So down here, this one's got a little bit more of the rain, kind of mushed it, but they're very pretty. And more buds right there. So a couple weeks ago, I made a video about how I trimmed all this back and did a bunch of chop and drop. And as you can see, it is like crazy and it's ready to pop back out. So within a couple months, it will be like I'd never even chopped and dropped it. All of that's down there, giving nutrients to this lemon and the cassava that fell over and then also to that banana. So hopefully they will stay up right in the storm but we'll see in a couple hours. So I thought this was kind of cool. So I did all the chop and drop and this peach tree was getting shaded out. And now that I've gave it some light, it decided to shoot out all this pretty new growth just in time for the storm. <laughs> Life happens like that sometimes. So in anticipation of the storm, I went ahead and harvested this roselle. I took the calyxes off. I left the seed pods, so hopefully they can keep developing and I can get the seeds later and use those to plant more because a lot of people really like this roselle. I was surprised at how much people like flocked to my listing for this, but it's really cool because these leaves are edible, the calyxes are edible, and it has some pretty kind of yellowish flowers on it. So a lot of people like to make drinks out of it. And for me, it was very profitable. So I hope to have a lot of these later. And over here, got the pretty flowers right here. I did a whole bunch of cutting cut the bananas back, cut this back so I'll have a nice clear path. I didn't cut the pigeon peas back. I probably should have, but I'll, I'll deal with it once the storm's over. So we're doing my favorite thing, which is experimenting in the kitchen. So I had about the two cups of roselles and I have a whole bunch of strawberries in my freezer. So I'm trying to use stuff from the freezer. And so I've put the strawberries in there. I've got the orange juice in there because that was there too. And then I'm going to try to put some spices in there and boil it down into either probably something I can put on yogurts, maybe just eat it by itself or put on some cake I have. And if it's good, I'll share the recipe. So this is what I'm doing with the roselle. Okay, here it is with yogurt. Mmm. I think it's good. I think it's good with everything. I still have a pile of mulch over there, so we'll see how that does in the storm. It's I probably should have finished it, but didn't. I ran out of time. I was putting the shutters on and everything else. So this was all grass, and now it is pretty 
plants and flowers. And we'll see how it does with the grass trying to regrow, but I'm planning to keep it just mulch for indefinitely. So if you guys have been following me at all, you'll know that I've had some trouble with butterflies. Like the zebra long wings, they absolutely love these passion fruit vines. And, you know, that's their host plant. So I'm usually okay with it. I've got some vines over there for them to eat, but they're older and tougher. So when they get a chance, they like to lay their eggs on these younger, tenderer ones. Now that I've taken off this protective netting that sometimes worked, they'll probably lay their eggs out if they don't get blown away in the winds. So, you know, good luck, passion fruit. Another thing I did to prep for the storm, so all these big, gigantic, beautiful mulberry leaves, I went ahead and took them off so that this would not get uh, shredded in the wind and hopefully it wouldn't break. So hopefully the wind just goes right past it. I did leave some down at the bottom, but it was a pretty tasty mulberry and I hope it continues to grow because I want more. <laughs> So lastly, I harvested this loofah. I've got two more out there and they'll probably fall off in the storm, but this one could be brought in. And then I've got the last bit of shutters right there, but I'm enjoying a little bit of light at least. I can't say sunshine, but some of this light. Okay, stay safe out there guys. Have a great day.